Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our video series on how to write a problem solving and modeling task in Queensland, a PSMT, which is a maths assignment. And this is our second solve video and the fifth, fifth, sixth video in our series. And our focus today is on discerning application of mathematical concepts and techniques. So let's have a quick talk about what we are going to cover in this video. We're going to look at the definition of discerning versus simple application. I'll show you some student examples and then we'll talk very quickly about what's coming up. So let's look at our instrument specific marking guide, also known as the ISMG. And we can see the different marks allocated to different parts. And in this video, we are focused on this middle dot point, discerning application of mathematical concepts and techniques relevant to the task. And if we can hit that box, we can get a mark for solve in the range of six to seven. You'll notice that the next box down has just application of mathematical concepts. So what that means is you've applied some mathematical concepts that are relevant to the task, but they're not really the perfect application. And then the third box down is the one we really don't want to get into, and that's our simplistic application. So we've also chosen some techniques and some concepts, and it's not quite right for the task. And then we've got some inappropriate procedures as well. So we definitely want to hit in that range of six to seven for solve. Let's find out how we do that. But first, we need to understand what discerning means. And here's the um, definition straight from the Queensland um, QCAA's syllabus. So it means discriminating, showing some intellectual perception, good judgment, making thoughtful and astute choices, and selected for value or relevance. Really, it's all about the kinds of choices and decisions you're making in your assignment. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't think I've made any decisions in my PSMT. It was all decided for me. Not entirely true. We'll talk about some of the types of choices you can be making. So some of these choices could include, for example, which formula to use to solve the problem. You might have decided to, for example, in a statistic situation, exclude an outlier. That's a decision that you've made. Was it the right decision or was it a wrong decision? It all depends on how the teacher defines discerning. The size of your sample that you've chosen, for example, if you are um, choosing your own data, that could also be a discerning or a simplistic choice. The method that you've chosen to do your sample with or to create your sample, the size of a domain that you decide to explore when you're looking at graphing, for example, or certain applications of problems. When you are graphing things, which variable you decide is independent or dependent, this is a choice that you're making and it may or may not be a discerning choice. Which type of graph you're using to represent your information. And your choice is very important. So there's right choices and there's wrong choices. If you make a correct choice, by definition, that's a discerning choice or a wise choice is another word for discerning. Um, if you make the wrong choice, even if you do a really good explaining, really good job explaining why you made that choice, it's not a discerning choice. It's not the right choice. So even the wrong choice explained well, well, you won't hurt for communication, but you will hurt on solve. Okay. It also is about your interpretation. So you'll notice that um, interpretation is also part of what's going on here. And that could include how you've interpreted different variables in your assignment. So if you're doing, for example, an assignment on bivariate data, you need to understand the difference between Pearson's correlation coefficient R and the coefficient of determination R squared. Now they look very similar. One's an, a variable and one is that variable squared, but the way that they are interpreted is quite different. Also, when you're looking at bivariate data and you're doing interpolation and extrapolation and also some other assignment contexts, you need to understand the difference between the two. You need to understand the difference between um, two variables being associated or related and one causing another. So that's also part of your interpretation in your assignment. So that analysis and evaluation that you do of your results, this is where some of your solve marks could come from depending on your interpretation of the question. For example, if you have an assignment on right angle triangles, so it could be an assignment using Pythagoras' theorem in junior school, or maybe even trigonometry. Well, there's different formulas that we use for right angle triangles, but there's also other formulas that we would use that would be more appropriate if we have a non right angle triangle. And I often see students don't know the difference and they will often apply very simple Sokotoa to any triangle and forget that it's only for right angle triangles. So that's something to be aware of as well if you're doing an assignment on trigonometry. If you're doing an assignment on measurement, some students get volume and surface area mixed up because they are both ways to look at three-dimensional shapes. So understanding the difference between the two is really important. 
Interpretation could also include, for example, if you're doing statistics again, understanding the difference between measures of spread and measures of center. It could also be for bivariate data, knowing when to use a line of best fit, which uses your own judgment, or whether to calculate a least squared regression line. It also, for example, if you're doing calculus in math methods, is knowing when to differentiate in a situation and when to integrate a situation. So these are all different ways that we can interpret the problem and apply different mathematical techniques to it. Also, you may need to decide when to solve your problem using an equation of some kind or perhaps use another method like using a graph. So knowing the right way to solve the problem is really important. Let's look at some student examples now where they've gone really well or where they haven't gone so well. Now this comes from our QCAA Essential Math Syllabus. It's a budgeting assignment for their 2019 PSMT and this one's been deemed by the QCAA to be simplistic application because they are actually supposed to provide a very detailed budget. However, all they did was find 30% of someone's income and say that will cover all of our expenses. Um, that is a simplistic application when the task requires you to do so much more. They've actually still come up with a budget, they just haven't done any of the work for it. Example two is a very simple one from statistics. This is student sample A. They have actually compared some um, information um, and split the data up into male and female. However, the task asked them to look at the data set as a whole. It didn't ask them to split into male and female. And they've decided to make that decision to do that and calculate statistics separately. That is not discerning. It's not a wise way to approach the data when the task has asked you not to do that. So be very careful. If you're not asked to split data up by gender, don't do it. Another example from a bivariate data context. This particular student has got really confused with the context of the assignment. Now, sometimes the context of the assignment, most of your PSMTs, your teacher will try and put it into a real life setting. And in this particular case, the setting has something to do with the golden ratio, which is a ratio that ancients came up with, um, Leonardo da Vinci was one of them, to describe the ratios of somebody's face or body proportions and make a measure for beauty. Now that was the context of the assignment and then the student then had to go along and calculate some heights versus arm lengths. Now instead of focusing on what they had to do for bivariate data, which is basically plot it on a scatter plot and then calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient, this is a grade 11 to 12 assignment, they've gone and calculated some means and then they've calculated the golden ratio. And the golden ratio isn't even part of the syllabus. So they've gone and got sidetracked by the context, gone and explored things they weren't meant to explore, and it's a simplistic application. They haven't actually applied the correct techniques. And this particular one is also a bivariate data one. And in this particular student, instead of drawing a scatter plot, they have gone and created a box plot. So they've actually represented the data in an incorrect way. They've used a simplistic approach to the problem instead of a more complex approach. So therefore it's not a discerning choice the way that they've chosen to graph this. Student D is also a bivariate data example. And in this particular case, they've used a very small sample of only 20 um, figures to collect their data. That's quite a small sample. And it's not a discerning choice when you use a very small sample. So you could get marked down on this particular part because it's not a discerning application of a mathematical technique. Our last example today is on a trigonometry assignment. And in this particular case, we can see that a student is trying to find the length across a river. And what they've actually done here is they've been given some information, they've done some calculations, and they actually don't have a right angle triangle. You see that the angles on the triangle are 80 degrees, 30 degrees, and 70 degrees. But they've applied the techniques using the cosine rule for right angle triangles. What they should have done is in fact use the sine formula for non-right angle triangles, which you learn about in year 10 extension. So unfortunately, this student would be marked down to probably a just application of techniques or even a simple application of techniques, depending on the task. 
Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you found this video helpful in understanding this dot point on the instrument specific marking guide. If you found it helpful, why not share it with a friend or a teacher and like and subscribe to the channel so that you'll know when the next installment on our PSMT videos is coming your way. And you can also contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or via direct message on Messenger, on Facebook or on Instagram. We're on both channels now. Why not join us and follow us there? Well, I'm Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Maths. Have a wonderful day.